Hello learners. Welcome to session one of designing presentations. My name is Sukriti Sachar. I have been a, an event professional and a pr presentation designer for about 11 years now. We're going to learn about usage of tools in order to create your own graphic language in a presentation. As an event manager, I see three different problems that we all face. One being the fact that we are always pressed for time. We're almost always doing too many things. And so we don't have enough time to put into the visual part of our presentations. The second is that while we know all the tools of presentation, uh, we don't really know how to practically apply these tools into visual storytelling. The third is consistency. Sometimes we start with certain graphics and by the end of the presentation, because of the content we use and working along with it, uh, according to our convenience, we make some changes in the presentation that doesn't keep it consistent. So it doesn't look like one presentation. And so we are going to focus on a consistent graphic language, how to get to that part. But this session, we're, we're focusing on how to, what even a graphic language includes. Let's begin. So we will begin with three tools uh, that are extremely important to a graphic language. But before that, let's get on to the actual learning objective. What will you get from this session? The learning objective is to basically find a smarter approach to visual storytelling in your PowerPoint presentations using a consistent graphic language. Now, why do you need presentations? As an event manager, presentations become an integral part of your entire process. Uh, depending on if you're meeting the client for the first time, you're pitching them a new idea. And even after the event is done, you're creating a post event report. And for that you need presentations. With presentations along with beautifully made slides, you also need to use your skill set of voice modulation and body language. Now you understand why you need to make presentations, but why do you need to know how to make good presentations? Say you have a brilliant idea, but you were not able to present it well. It is quite possible that it gets sidelined or it does not get its due importance. In order to create your own brand value, in order to show that you made an effort and in order to finally generate business from a potential client, you need to learn how to make good well-structured presentations. In presentations, you have two parts. One is storyboarding, which is the actual content, the flow of the presentation. And the other is the creative rendition, the look of the presentation. So how you will make the content stand out using different graphics, that is what the creative rendition make, includes. Now, what does a graphic language include? What makes a graphic language? The three elements that make a graphic language are the colors, the fonts, and the shapes you use. We will see examples of these later. A lot of people think that images also create a graphic language. However, that's not true. If you were to create a theme, a look, and if you were to replace the imagery from automobile to telecom, it might still work. So imagery is replaceable and hence it comes under slide enhancers. I think you can enhance your slides using images, using animations and transitions, and also using media, sound and video. But in this session, we will focus on these three points, the colors, fonts, and shapes. In order to find the colors that you will use for your presentation, you need to research about the brand. 
what does the brand logo look like what colors are dominant in their website in their logo in their other graphics from there you should be able to find the color combination you're trying to use in your presentation every time you make a graphic language that comes from the brand and you go and present it to a company it creates an instant connect a recall value like you might call it if you are making it for your own company then you might find the colors in your own logo the colors that you want to choose will also showcase the personality of the presentation if you use brighter colors it will be like a fun nice youthful presentation you could also make it more uh, soulful and mindful using more neutral colors now how to find these color combinations that you can use in your presentations there is a science to it all the color wheel shows you all the colors in the spectrum and the three color combinations that i want you to focus on out of a lot of the, those that exist are analogous monochromatic and complementary monochromatic presentations are going to be the trend of the upcoming years now what does monochromatic really mean monochromatic color combinations are basically different shades of the same color when you use them together it becomes a monochromatic color combination for example if i'm looking at a red here and then i'll see the lightest red at the center of the color wheel if i use any colors that are inside this this particular line all the different shades of red in my presentation it becomes a monochromatic presentation if i'm using colors that sit beside each other red with this orange or red with this purple and this other blue then that's called an analogous color combination the colors that are next to each other is analogous complementary colors are when colors are opposite to each other on the color wheel so the red is opposite to the green or this particular yellow is opposite to this particular blue so they will work together as a complementary color combination i will just show you some examples when you see this particular presentation you see that yellow has been used in text boxes in highlighting text also it is there in the pictures that you see when you see a certain color that is dominant in a picture you call it a picture accent so it is the yellow is also the picture accent here and that's why it creates like a consistency of color but since it is the same color or different shades of the same color it's called a monochromatic presentation similarly here different shades of pink here you will see a combination of an orange with a blue since they are complementary colors they are opposite to each other on the color wheel it's a complementary color combination so you found the colors that you want to use in the presentation how do you fix them in the template let's take a look in the presentation you go to view and then you will go into slide master in slide master you see something called colors which is right here now i have a lot of these customized combinations but you should be able to see these com combinations in your systems in order to customize it for your presentation you just go to customize colors and here you can specify the colors that you want using this particular chart or you could also specify the rgb of the color so if you are able to find the rgb of the specific color that you would like you can find that here so all of the other colors apart from the whites and grays that you need i usually put them in the accents so they are readily available for usage for text or for shapes and so i create a new i created a new palette and i can name it as per my client but say i want to say client abc and this is the client that i'm making this combination for i save it now whenever i'm going to make a presentation for client abc all i have to do is just pick up this combination and start working with the presentation now 
you are able to fix the colors in the template. But how do we use these colors? We don't want to put a big blob of the color on each slide. It becomes really cluttered, very jarring to the eye. So we want to learn a few ways of subtly using colors in the presentations and making it come together. The first way of using color is backgrounds. So you could fix the background to be a solid color. You could also make it a gradient color, right? So let's see how to do that. When I go to my slide, all I have to do is right click and I find format background. So these are the options you have that you can choose from. You have a solid color, you have gradient. We're not going to talk about picture fills right now, but you can make it a solid fill by choosing a color you'd like, or you can keep it a gradient and then you can change the colors of the gradient if you want. So you could use these color backgrounds once in a while in the entire presentation. I also think that a lot of us keep our presentations with white backgrounds, but as a breaker, as a breather between all the white slides, I feel we could use a color dominant background or just a color background uh, to break the monotony. If you have very little text that has to go on to it, it, cre it creates, uh, it makes it not boring. So, and then the other, other ways of using color are the subtle ways of using color are a heading placeholder or a picture border. These are things that we don't really pay a lot of attention to. We don't really think about how we're going to place our headings. We usually have our headings just, you know, uh, in the middle of nowhere without any actual place. So I try and create like an actual format, an actual placement for the heading and use colors there. So a heading placeholder basically means that if you have, if you're creating a slide which has a heading, I want to just create a placement for this thing. So I want to say that, okay, my headings will come something like this. So I say title. Sorry. Here. So, and this would be the placement for my headings. I could also use brackets like these at the beginning or the end of the heading. And similarly, these same things can also be used in my picture borders. So my picture border should also have, can also have these colored elements. So if my entire slide is white and I'm using these small little things to showcase the color, it becomes part of my graphic language. Now, in text highlighting also, we use a lot of the times we use bold, underline, italics, right? What you can also use is, use, you can increase the font size of the uh, words that you want to highlight. You can also change the font. I do not recommend that, but you can also change the font if you'd like. And also you can change the color. So if pink, like I'm, I'm working with pink right now, if pink is my heading placeholder color or it becomes my picture bracket, I can also use it to highlight my text while making it bold and italics. Now, picture tints. What do I mean by picture tint? This is the original picture. In order to give it a tint of my color, my more dominant color in the palette, what I should do ideally is I should create a box on top of the picture. And all I need to do is increase its transparency a bit so that there is a tint to the picture. So it's not that dark anymore. It's become a part of my graphic language. It's almost like it could be not pink, of course, your color could be something else, but it becomes part of my entire presentation with this small little action. We don't really think about these things. We don't really think about images, but you could if you'd like to. Also, another way of using colors in pictures is picture accents. So like I said earlier, when a picture has a more dominant color in it, that's called a picture accent. That color is the picture accent color. So like we've been using pink for all the other things. This is a picture that I would ideally use if I had to, because it has more pink in it. It makes it more aligned with my brand colors, so to say. 
Now that we figured how to work with colors in our presentations, let's move on to text or fonts. In a presentation, ideally you should have two fonts. If you want to highlight a um, certain text with a third font, that's fine. But try and keep it to two fonts. Now there are two types of fonts that you find in general. There is a serif font and a source serif font. What does this mean? So a serif font is essentially a font which has this triangular edge at the end of the letters. So you see the F, you see the R, there's a triangular edge to it. Sans serif means, sans means without. So it means without the triangular edge. So any font that is a very clean ending is a sans serif font. The kind of fonts that you need for a presentation, the first is a heading font, which is a bold, very readable font. Whenever you find fonts for your presentation, make sure they're readable in terms of letters and numbers as well. Apart from headings, you also need a content font. A content font has to be readable even more because it's in a smaller font size, right? And then the third could be if you'd like to highlight some text on certain slides, you could use some cursive fonts if you'd want. Like we fixed colors in a template, you can also fix fonts in a template. Let's take a look. So we go back to our slide master and you see fonts under colors. Again, there are a lot of combinations I have, but you should be able to find certain uh, combinations that already exist. You can customize those combinations by going to customize fonts. And here you will see there is a heading font, there is a body font, and you can customize whichever font you like for any of these. Now say I customize this for client ABC like earlier and I say save. Now whenever I'm going to make a presentation for client ABC, I can choose the colors of client ABC and then I can also choose the fonts for client ABC here. And that's it. That's all I have to do to start making the presentation in terms of colors and fonts. As with other objects in presentations, images and shapes, fonts also have like with shapes actually, fonts also have something called fills and effects, right? So let's take a look at what are the different kinds of fills that you have for text and the kind of effects you have for it. Say I have a word that I'm working with. Let's go into text fills and take a look. In text fills, you have no fill if you want no color in the text. You have a solid fill, so you can fill in the text with a different solid fill if you'd like. You have a gradient fill. A gradient is essentially a smooth transition between two colors, two or more colors. So you can choose to have that gradient from one color to another in your text. You can also fill it with a picture. So right now it's filled in with a texture which you can choose from here in their library or you can go to picture source and fill it in with a photograph, with a picture. So you can put picture inside text. What you can also do is in terms of, let's go back to just basic solid color so I can show you the effects on text. Now, apart from all of these fills that you have, and mind you, all these fills are the same for shapes as well. You will find the same exact options for shapes also. So let's go out to the text effects now. So under text options, you will find text effects. And again, all of these effects remain the same for shapes and images also. So we'll just see them once and then you will be able to work with them with all three. Under shadow, in the presets, presets are existing sets of shadows. So you could just pick these options or if you'd like to customize, then you can use these options right here. So let's say I want to use a center shadow and now I've put a center shadow, but I want to increase the size of the shadow. So I can increase the size from here 
I can increase the blur from here if I'd like or decrease it to make it very sharp. I can increase the transparency if I want. So I can change all of these things from here in shadow. Works the same way for images and shapes as well. Let's make the shadow gone. And let's go into a reflection. So a reflection is how a reflection works. So you have different reflections again as options under presets. Also, you can do the same thing here with different options here. So you can customize the reflection if you'd like. Then you have glow, which is different kinds of glow that you can have around the word if you'd like. You know, you also have soft edges, which gives it a very blurry effect, 3D format and 3D rotation. I try not to use 3D format, 3D rotation and soft edges a lot because I feel it makes it cluttered. So does glow. So I try and keep it simple with just shadows. In order to highlight a word, a shadow is really enough. In words, in, in text, when you're working with text in a PPT, there are a few things that you should remember. First is the font size. I feel that the default font size, the heading font size is 44 uh, in a general template. I don't think we need headings that big. Also, it takes up a lot of space. So you can make the heading font size smaller in the slide template and I will show you how to do that. So what you do is you go back to slide master and you go to the master slide. Here you can fix the font size. So you choose the heading and say you want to say 36. Then your headings become smaller. See, now they've all become 36 here. And for all my text, I want it to be 16 and not 18. Then it becomes smaller here, right? So you can fix these font sizes in Slide Master itself. And I feel that for any content that you're putting uh, on your slide body, body content, uh, it should be anywhere between 14 to 16 as font size. And for headings, 36 to 40 is a decent enough uh, font size for headings. In terms of alignment, in your PPT, when you have a lot of text, ideally all of the text should be aligned in one manner. Your headings can be central aligned or left aligned, but all your body copy should be either left aligned, center aligned or right aligned. It cannot be such that you have a few lines that are left aligned, a few that are center aligned and a few that are right aligned. Why are we creating a graphic language? Why are we working with the same colors and the same fonts? To create consistency. And that is what alignment also brings to the table. Now, how do you highlight text? The simple ways of highlighting text are making it bold, italics, underlining, increasing the font size, but also we spoke about how you can change the color and change the font in order to highlight text in a PPT. Now, any text that you want to highlight, you can make it bold, change the font to a bit bolder font, increase the font size. However, if you have a picture in the background, so say you have a photograph that you're using for the background, while I can make it white and it will stand out, if I still want to make it stand out even more, you can also give it a shadow that we have already learned about. And you can also give it an outline. So the moment you give your fonts a bit of an outline, if you see now, it stands out more than the font without an outline. So you could use outlines, bold, increasing font size, shadows, anything, to highlight certain text in the deck. But you have to highlight text in the deck. Sometimes we write full sentences just so that the client can understand what we're trying to say, but nobody has the time to go through the entire text. And so wherever we want them to look, we need to highlight that part of the text. And so wherever we want them to look, we need to highlight that part of the text. Let's move on to shapes. Shapes create the entire look of a presentation. 
So if you want a sharper presentation, you'd make uh, it using shapes like squares or triangles. If you want a more fluidic presentation, you can use shapes like circles or other fluidic shapes. Now, these are the three basic shape families that you will find in PowerPoint. Every other shape comes from these shapes, a triangle, a square and a circle. So when you take a look at all the shapes that you find in the insert shape panel, you will see that they're all made with combinations of these shapes or basic editing of these three shapes. I'm going to show you three slides where you will understand what I'm trying to say. When you see all these shapes, you see that they should belong to one family. They all belong to the triangular family because they all get made using triangles and they all have some common aspects like the edginess, the inclines, the angles, right? Similarly, for circles, you have these shapes. I will not use a normal rectangle in a circular graphic language. I will probably use a rounded rectangle. I will use a teardrop or I will use a cylinder or an arc. All of these shapes make one family because of the way they look. Similarly for squares, if I have to use a bracket, I would use a square bracket. If I have to use a speech bubble, I will use a square speech, speech bubble in a square graphic language. Now, how all do you use shapes? The same things that we did with text, we can do with shapes. In terms of fills, we already learned about solid fills. So the same way that you have text, when you go into shape options, you have the same exact options. You can make it a solid fill or you can make it a gradient fill, right? And also in terms of outlines, outlines also have three options. So let's take a look. Outlines, you have an option of no line. You have an option of solid line where you can change the color. Let's increase the width of the outline to make it thicker. So I'm going to increase it to 30 so that you see the outline. That is, you need to use width to increase the outline size. So you can make it a solid outline. You can also make it a gradient outline. So here you can customize colors if you'd like. These outlines work the same way in text and images also. In outlines, there are a few other things. I'm going to make it smaller again. Let me make it five instead of 30. You also have something called compound type. Compound type, there are two, three options that you see here. So you see double lines, you see a thick line and then a thin line. And when you make these changes, you will only be able to see them when you make your line thicker. As you make it thicker, it will become more apparent, these compounds that you will use, like that. You can also make them uh, different dash types. So I'm going to make it thinner back again so you understand what I mean. Dash types could be dots, could be dashes. Of course, it looks different right now because it's a very thick outline. See, now as I'm making it thinner, it becomes closer, it becomes closer dashes. So you could work with all these things in outlines and the outlines work the same way for shapes, fonts and images. Like with fills, in terms of images, if I went to a, I'm going to make a shape and show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to fill this shape with a picture. So I just have to go to fill and it says picture here. And because it already had, I just need to go into insert from file, pick up the picture and put it in. Now the same thing I have to do with the triangle also, but you will see that there is a problem. Like a lot of the picture just gets cut out of it, right? Which is why triangles become a difficult shape to work with. And that is when the shape family comes in handy. So if you were trying to work with shapes 
uh, triangle as a shape in a PPT, you can start using a rhombus or a parallelogram to put in the imagery along with that. But these are things that you have to decide in advance when you start making a presentation because that's how you will look for uh, references for your presentation also. Now, in terms of filling the shape in, the one way that we saw was picture fill, uh, shape fill with a picture. The other way of doing uh, a, a shape fill with a picture is that you bring in a picture. So I bring in a picture which I need to change the shape of and what I do is I basically go into picture format and under crop I see crop to shape. Now I want it in a circular shape so I will take a circle but this is not a circle it's an ellipse. In order to change it to a circle I need to change its aspect ratio. An aspect ratio is a proportion. So the proportion of a circle is one is to one because the diameter is same on all sides. Let's go back to crop. Aspect ratio, one is to one. So now you see it's become a circle. Here, if I go back to crop, I'm able to move around the picture inside the circle and choose which part of the picture I want inside. So these are two ways that you can put a picture inside a shape. Yes. Now, like in fonts, you had different effects. In shape as well, you have different effects. Like I said, shadow, reflection. This is a shadow. This is a reflection. And this, while it has a reflection, it also has a soft edge. So let me remove the reflection for now. This is what a soft edge does. It makes it so initially this shape was like this, with soft edges, it makes the edges blurred out. You could use this if you uh, need it anytime behind a text box uh, to make it stand out more. Instead of using an exact, like a big box, you can use a soft edges box. Let's now, let's talk about how to stylize the shapes that you decide to use in your presentation. Now say you decide, okay, I want to use circles, but are you going to use the circles with a gradient fill, with a solid fill, along with another shape from the shape family? For example, on this slide, this is a vertical slide and hence you see it like this. There is a circle, but also there is a combination of circle with arcs. So there are different arcs here. You see a white arc, you see a thicker outline arc, and here also you see a circle which is a dark color made a bit transparent, a thicker outline along with some arcs. I've used that graphic across this entire PPT to give it consistency. So, but I have not used a plain circle. How am I to use or how am I to stylize that shape defines how I'm going to put text inside it. Every time you use a shape inside a PPT, it should have some utility. Either you are putting a picture inside the shape or you're putting some text inside the shape or it's being used for some heading. Every shape that you put on your slide should have a use. Please do not use shapes for decorative purposes. For decorative purposes, you have background images. You have uh, other abstract backgrounds that you can use. You do not need to clutter your slide with shapes. In shapes, there are two other things that I want to teach you. With every shape, if you'd like to customize it, mostly you don't need to, but if you have to customize it, there's something called edit points and also something called yellow nodes. Let's take a look. I've just got these sample shapes here. For example, I have a parallelogram. I am going to go to shape format and if I want to make it a more abstract shape, I go to edit shape, edit points. Every corner of the shape becomes a node, meaning I can pick up the node and put it anywhere I'd like to change the look of the shape. So if I was making a very abstract pop culture kind of a graphic language, I could use it 
like this now you can also add nodes so if you were to go to an edge and just say add point you can add a node you can also delete a node these are the things that you can do with edit points let's make it a parallelogram back because i want to show you something else you see every each of these shapes has this yellow point you see this yellow node and in every shape this yellow point does different things in a parallelogram it increases the incline in a rounded rectangle it increases the roundedness increases and decreases the roundedness in something like this it increases and decreases the width of this line same for a donut increases and decreases the width now all of these shapes almost all of these shapes have this yellow node except the ones in flow chart almost all of them will have yellow nodes and you can work with them in order to see what it does to the shape we will in the next session learn about how to find the right references and how to work with slide enhancers thank you